Welcome to another Ag Legacy recording. Ag Legacy is a series of presentations and other online materials intended to assist rural families in creating their own legacy by beginning the thought process and opening the lines of communication. Today's recording will address the question, How do you plan for the cost of succession? I'm John Hewlett a ranch and farm management specialist in the Department of Agricultural and Applied Economics at the University of Wyoming. I will be your speaker for today's Ag Legacy presentation. Most people look forward to retirement with anticipation, often imagining it as the end of their working life. In many cases, the retiree does not plan to worry much about financial planning and investing after retirement. A recent Forbes article describes the reality as far different. 40% of baby boomers expect to work until they die, according to data from the AARP. In order to retire financially secure, you must have a plan. But what should it include? And how do you put it together? Are there other details we should be worrying about? Which ones? Let's take a look. Bertha and Joe had been planning to retire in the early to mid-sixties since they bought their last farm. They were both now in their later sixties and really didn't have a solid plan for transferring the farm or the management duties to either of their two children. Sally and Billy Joe had both been back on the farm since completing their college degrees. The farm was doing well and the three families seemed to have good communication. However, Both Sally and Billy Joe had concerns about their parents' retirement. In particular, they were worried about the financial management of the farm. Bertha had always kept the books, and neither she nor Joe were very interested in sharing any of those details. The question hanging over the farm these days was, when will they retire, and where will they stand financially when they do? It is vital to lay out the specific steps needed to move the present managers from day-to-day management of the farm or ranch to full-time retirement and transition to new manager or managers to full authority so that they can begin to plan and prepare for the next successors who will carry the operation into yet another generation. Specific steps to consider preparing for retirement include First, drafting a financial plan showing how retirement will be financed. Second, draft an agreement between the retiring manager or managers and the successors about the extent of involvement the older generation will have in the business. Draft an agreement about where various farm family members will live. And finally, list some ideas about what activities will absorb the retiring generation's creative energies. The Management Succession Workbook from the Management Succession How Do We Get There From Here online course includes worksheets to help with developing plans for retirement. This worksheet offers users a space to begin sketching out the details of a plan, for example, when to retire, ideas on how long the process might take, the biggest concerns, etc. The first page of the Retirement Plan Worksheet provides space to first sketch out a couple of your most important goals. Next, describe what those goals may mean for your spouse. The third section will allow you to take stock of what you have to work with in the way of resources, skills, or interests. And the fourth section asks a few questions about your health, including things to improve and activities you plan to participate in. The second page of the worksheet provides space to describe your plans for Social Security and your spouse's plans. Uh, Outline your network of friends and family members that you plan to continue to interact with during retirement. A third section provides for a description of the work you plan to do or not do in retirement. And finally, a space to consider your expenses in a general way after retiring. Retiring managers often must rely on the business for support during the later stages of life. Oftentimes, so much money has been invested in the farm or ranch that no savings, investments, or retirement funds have been established for those who are at the retirement stage of their lives. Financial preparation should be made to accommodate retiring founders as well as the successors transitioning into management. If necessary, talk to financial, investment, and retirement planning experts. 
It is also true that very few people ever have enough money to cover all their wants in retirement. It seems the more we have, the more we want and think we need, but the power of choice can control incomes of all sizes. Setting financial goals can give a person that power. Determining the sources and amounts of cash flows is the first step to matching our cash inflows to our cash outflows. When considering retirement, it is important to estimate your financial requirements. Retirement can be expensive. Most experts estimate that retirees will require 70 to 90 percent of their pre-retirement income after they stop working. In short, paying for the retirement you truly desire is ultimately your responsibility. This is another reason why it is beneficial to plan for retirement while you are still young. The Retirement Finances Worksheets are included to help consider what personal expenses might look like in retirement as compared to their pre-retirement totals. A resource section in the Management Succession Workbook also provides links to other helpful online financial planning materials. You will want to designate someone to handle your financial affairs, including paying monthly bills, when you are no longer able to do so for yourself. You will need to allow that person access to your bank and other financial accounts. This is commonly accomplished via powers of attorney and ownership of joint accounts. Assets can be defined as anything owned by you or your business that can be sold, traded, or otherwise has value. Assets are classified as either current or long-term. In agriculture, you will sometimes hear discussion of a third category called intermediate assets. Generally, asset categories include current assets, uh, which are those things which generally have a useful life of less than one year. Such assets are liquid. That is, they can be sold or easily used within a short period of time. Some examples are cash, checking account balances, and feed inventories. Long-term assets are those with a useful life of greater than one year. They are not typically liquid, and the sale of such items would impact the revenue generation process of the business. Examples include real estate, buildings, and equipment. Keep in mind that assets can be valued at either fair market value, or what the asset can be sold for on the open market, or net of depreciation, which is the purchase price less depreciation taken in previous years. Liabilities are debts, obligations, or other commitments pledged to someone else or another business. There are two general categories of liabilities. Those are current liabilities or obligations owed within the nearest 12 months, and long-term liabilities, which are obligations owed beyond the nearest 12 months. Net worth is the total value of what you own. It is calculated by subtracting your liabilities or debts from the total value of your assets. Net worth is also known as equity. A statement of net worth is also known as a balance sheet or statement of owner equity. In general, there are two categories of personal property. Tangible assets are personal property that can be held or touched, a few examples of which include horses or tractors, paintings, a doll collection as examples, and they may be, in fact, appreciable. Whereas intangible assets are personal property with no physical existence, for example, stocks or bonds. Financial managers will require a comprehensive list of your assets, net worth, and liabilities, which would allow them to calculate your net worth and track how it might change over time. In order for someone to take over management of your financial accounts when you die, he or she will need a list of all your assets and liabilities. The Management Succession Workbook Financial Plan Worksheets are designed to help you begin thinking through what assets you may have, the value of any debt, and your resulting net worth. The second page provides a brief space to outline expected business income and expenses looking forward before retirement, as well as a short form to describe your expectations after your retirement. Every succession plan should include contingency plans. What will happen if something goes wrong? 
Under this heading, things like disability insurance, life insurance, employee training, backup support, how-to manuals, and communication with family, employees, and key stakeholders should be considered. Sometimes, when we're on a trip, we run into road construction or a washed-out bridge and are forced to replan our route. We may not have all the answers when we first encounter a failure or major roadblock, but we should have a process in mind to deal with such situations and to plan a new route. Again, communication is critical in dealing with contingencies. Sometimes we just can't get there from here. If the roads and bridges are totally destroyed, we may have to settle for a new destination. Consequently, every strategic plan needs a system for changing the course of action when obstacles appear in the path forward. Never assume things will go just as you plan, they seldom do. It is critical to ensure that all members of the business are committed to the succession plan and understand that headway is being made toward accomplishments. To make sure this takes place, regular meetings should be scheduled and family members updated on progress. If needed, replanning or adjustments to the overall direction, roles, responsibilities, and timeline should be made to allow the succession process to proceed to the desired outcome. The main thing here is to ensure that everyone involved is still committed to the same journey. If major changes have occurred and individuals feel it is needed, it may be necessary to revisit all the stages planned for the journey to ensure that the business and the people involved arrive at the destination. The Management Succession Course Workbook also includes a worksheet that may be helpful for planning beyond your goals for retirement. The Roadmap for Change Worksheet describes the resources and activities necessary to complete the succession process. The part each team member will play in the transition process is outlined, additional resources needed are considered, and a detailed timeline with specific action steps are described. Next, you identify which goals for change are most critical for successful transition of management responsibilities. This may include goals that are critical because they must take place before others. Other goals may be critical because they are more important or have greater significance to the situation than other goals. Prioritize goals for change can help guide carrying out the plan as well as give management direction in the monitoring and adjustment point of the process. Ag Legacy can help and materials are available. We recommend that you get started today. Use the internet to locate resources, many of which are free, and see materials at the aglegacy.org website, including self-paced presentation courses, works, newsletters and bulletins, recorded presentations, and much more. Bertha and Joe had planned to retire someday, but someday was not arriving very quickly. In addition, they were not making much progress in handing over the reins to the next generation. What if Sally or Billy Joe left the farm in frustration before Bertha and Joe ever got around to including them in the management of the operation? Keep in mind, it is never too late to get started, especially where the individuals involved are interested. You do have options. Plan to take a step or maybe two in order to get things rolling soon. We would like to hear from you about topics or presentations you would like to see offered in the future. Please consider sending an email to information at aglegacy.org or visit the aglegacy.org website for more information. In closing, let me extend my thanks to our Ag Legacy team making this series possible. We would also like to thank you, our viewers, for taking time to view this Ag Legacy recording. We sincerely hope that you find today's content of value in your work. We hope to see you again in one of our upcoming programs, and until then, we offer you our sincerest hope for success in creating an ag legacy for yourself and your family. For Ag Legacy, I'm John Hewlett.